Gospel according to Luke, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one of these things that had seen. On the next day, when he had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met him. Just then, a man from the crowd shouted, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son. He is my only child. Suddenly, a spirit seizes him, and all at once he shrieks. It convulses him, and so he foams at the mouth. It mauls him and will scarcely leave him. I begged your disciples to cast it out, but when they could not, Jesus answered, You faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. While he was coming, the demon dashed him to the ground in convulsions, but Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And all were astonished at the greatness of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, help us to listen to you. Amen. In today's reading, we hear about two separate events that occur the first event is the transfiguration in Luke chapter 9, 28 through 36. And the second event is the healing of the demon-possessed boy in Luke 9, 37 through 43. And as I prepared my sermon for this week, I couldn't help but wonder how these two events go together. Because in the one event, we hear about Jesus being revealed and we get a command and the second event is a healing story. The conclusion I was able to reach, though, was that both of these events tell us something about Jesus. They also tell us something about ourselves. So I want to look at the first event here in Luke chapter 9. Specifically, I want to focus on verse 35, where, G where God says, This is my son, the chosen. And then he gives the disciples the command to listen to him. Now, we know from verse 31 that Jesus was talking to Moses and Elijah, and they were talking to him about his departure that was about to happen in Jerusalem. But that word departure comes from the Greek word ek odon, which also can be translated as death. And this is the third time in chapter 9 where we hear about the death of Jesus foretold. The other two times occur uh, in the earlier part of the chapter as well as the later part in the chapter in verses 9-2 and 9-44. But I want to highlight the problem with this being that this is the third time, well, the second of the three times, and the disciples do not seem to understand what is going to happen and they do not understand really who Jesus is. So I must ask, were they really listening to Jesus? The next part of the story is 
the healing of the demon-possessed boy. Now, the symptoms that the boy seemed to be uh, feeling are that similar to epilepsy. And in verse 40, we hear that the disciples cannot heal the boy. Despite the fact that in Luke 9, 1, Jesus gives them the power and authority over demons and to cure diseases. But despite that, they cannot help this child. And Jesus' reaction is that of frustration and annoyance. Still, Jesus heals the boy and casts out the demon, but the other thing I want to highlight about this chapter is that question he raises before healing the boy. How much longer must I bear with you? The Greek word that gets translated to be bear is on echomai, which also means be patient with. How much longer must I be patient with you? Do you hear him? Do you, fee do you hear his frustration, his disappointment? If I were in Jesus' position, I would have easily felt the same way. But I think I would have gone a little bit further. I think I probably would have given up on my disciples. I would have given up on the people that I had given the authority and the power to heal and cure diseases and to cast out demons. I would have given up on the people who do not understand my nature and what is about to happen. Perhaps you all know that feeling as well. The feeling of having such high hopes in someone or high hopes of something happening only for that person to let you down or if those things that we hope to happen do not occur. Perhaps it's not so much that a person lets you down, it's more or less that they say something to you or you say something to them and it's hurtful and there's just disappointment in the actions that occur and in the transactions between you and them. Whatever the case may be, whenever there's a loss of hope or whenever people let us down or life lets us down, we are so tempted to despair. We are so tempted to lose hope. However, despite the question, two things are still in play. The first thing is the command to the disciples to listen to Jesus. Now, this command means two things. The first thing is that it is a call to Jesus to continue to teach and lead the disciples. The second thing is that it's a call for the disciples to still listen and follow Jesus. Despite being rebuked, despite maybe being told something that's damaging to their pride or thinking that they had it correct, they still have to follow and they still have to bear with Jesus and Jesus still has to bear with them. And we see this, friends. We see the boy get healed. And we see Jesus still lead the disciples up until the very end. And this call is a call to stick with it. My dad told me once, sometimes you try to fix something, it's trial and error. You have to stick with it. So just as the disciples were called to listen to Jesus and just as Jesus was called to teach and lead them, so too are we called to listen and follow Jesus. The beautiful thing is this. We will not always understand how God is moving in our lives. And we are going to be frustrated. 
But God understands that frustration. God understands the temptation, the feelings of despair, the want to give in and give up. Because God felt that in the person of Jesus as Jesus led and taught the disciples. And that is why Jesus was chosen. Jesus was chosen partly so that God could be incarnate and know what we feel when things are hard and there just doesn't seem to be a way out. And it's also why we are called to follow and listen to Jesus because Jesus is going to be that voice that calls us back to hope that calls us back to him. And here is the honest-to-goodness truth of the matter. Ready? We are going to despair. We are going to lose hope. Our faith will shake. And we are not always going to understand what is going on. But these words, they're not meant to be a criticism. They're not to be a judgment on our behavior. Rather, they are meant to liberate us. Because these feelings, they're part of our calling to follow and listen to God. And you know what? God is not going to give up on us. Jesus heals the boy. Jesus walks with the disciples. And despite everything, we must remember that part of our calling is not to have all the answers or to be perfectly obedient all the time. (coughs) If we were, and if we did do all of that, then what would be the point of faith? And why do we have sin? Why do we sin? I would like you to know that within the 2,000 plus years of Christianity, complete with theological conversation and addressing different heretical views, that biblical scholars and theologians are still wrestling with these questions. Now, perhaps by the second coming, they'll have a solid answer, unless that happens tomorrow. (laughs) The point, though, is this. No matter what happens, no matter how much we doubt, despair, lose hope, lose faith. We have to keep listening. We have to be patient with ourselves and with God and with one another. We cannot, well, we can give in, but we cannot stop listening. My hope is for all of us to be Inspired. My hope is for all of us to be reminded of what this call means, this call to listen, and that we can find Jesus in the worst of our moments, still leading and teaching us. So keep listening, because Jesus is speaking. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you.